What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. On the Boss Man Show, going to South Carolina to the Colored Yellow Jackets head football coach Teddy Keith on the Boss Man Show. Been there, his nice office back there in South Carolina. Coach, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. Just, in, just coming off my vacation, kind of enjoying my off season a little bit, and trying to get ready for camp. I hear that, Coach. And Coach, can you believe it's been your fifth season, season already? Uh, that you're about to do this? How <laughs> time flies, man. I know it's the fifth season in my 24th year of coaching. And I tell myself, I'm like, whoa, I got to do something, that, you know, for, tw- for 24 years that I love. And, and and this has been more of a legacy thing here. This five years here has been great. You know, I haven't gotten the wins I wanted on the field, but the 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 the, the billing process, being able to shape things and, and being having an opportunity to be able to build a program from the ground up, it's just been all a learning curve and a learning experience for me. Yes, indeed, Coach. And, you know, having the administration understand you have to re- rebuild something is, is great. A lot of times in college sports, you know this, they want immediate gratification. And they don't want to hear about you have to build. So how good is that administration who understands you have to do this from the ground up and have people around who are supporting you and this beat? I always say anything, whether you're starting a business or anything, you have to invest at least five years into that before you'll start seeing a, a, a return on your investment. And I think this year is one of those years that we may see a return on our investment. Um, the year before, we went four and five, and then we went one and eight, and then we turned around. We could we we almost saw an, a return on the investment earlier, but you know things happen. This new landscape of college football, and and um, people jumping in the portal, and people leaving, and they get a little success. Um, that's probably been the most difficult part of you know trying to build success continuously because so many kids when you come to a place like Allen or places that every kid has that dream to want to play at the highest level so let's say because they wasn't getting recruited as a high school kid they look up and they say well I'm just gonna go play at Allen like one year and if I go have some success I'm gonna go find me another team that I could jump on that possibly will get me closer to my dreams um the way I want to be so there's no there's no building process for a kid anymore. He's jumping and he's tree climbing. He's looking for the next best opportunity. And coach, sticking on that point, coach, I feel like this coach, you know, so the, 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 the sky don't lie. You know, if you can play, you can play. I feel like sometimes kids jump and end up not playing. It hurts out opportunity to play on Sundays or in the XFL, the CFL, or the USFL because they're not playing. And I feel like sometimes they jump that 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 that, that, that carry that quick money or that quick promise. I'm going to get burned on the front end and the back end because you don't have no film out there to get drafted or sign into others for agent. There's no doubt about that. I think that there's ill advisement 
you know, people go to the, the barbershop and, you know, the worst people you could have is when you were great in high school. And then you get in the barbershop and everybody, oh, you was too good for that school. You was too good for this. You should have been playing here and playing there. No, nobody missed you. And I tell people that all the time. There's very few that just jump from Division two to Division one and they just be ballers. Um, there's there's enough people out there that get paid enough money to identify talent, to go through the process of finding a guy that can fit wherever they play. Um, it's happening at the Division One level a, a lot more frequently than it is at the Division Two level. When you look in the portal, all these kids jump in the portal. The ones that were good that's leaving to go from one SEC school to the next SEC school, yes, you understand those moves that maybe he got an opportunity to go play, but they go fast and often. But when you look in the portal and this same person in the portal that jumped in there in January and you look up and it's July now and he's still in the portal, you, you got to understand they saw you. But you didn't. You wasn't a fit to their programs or whatever. And I think kids got to start really evaluating themselves from the inside out, saying, "This is where I'm at. I'm comfortable. I'm a starter here. I'm playing. I'm able to gather film. And 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 if you really did the homework, there's more kids that play in the NFL that's from Division Two and One Double A. That's why when you look down some of these people rosters, you'd be like, "Where's Brown University at?" Because these kids don't cost a lot of money for the investment. But they may turn around and be really great football players because they're not as beat up as those guys that may be coming from an SEC where they've been played 10, 12, and four years of those 10, 12 games. Well, that's just like NFL football now. And, Coach, you like, like, you know, I play at Tennessee State. You know, L.C. Cole and your staff, I've known them all my whole life. You know, I was at football camp at Tennessee State. <laughs> okay. Him and Johnny oh. Cole. So, like, so, oh, my team was Dominic Rogers, Rogers Cromartie and Anthony Levine who had two long cruises in the NFL from Tennessee right. State. You know what I'm saying? So I know from firsthand experience, if you stay at the one double level, if that's where you're at, you can ball, they'll find you. The RC is a first round draft pick from Tennessee State. That's right. That's right. You preach it better than they respond. And the kids just don't see it. They got this the social media ram has allowed kids to have more of a platform to be able to explore other options. And I think it's always seeking to be a little bit greater. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I tell kids, I don't want nobody that don't want me. I can sit in here and I can preach to you. I can tell you. But if your uncle who never, you know, done anything or never accomplished anything in his life can sit in a room and tell you that you need to go play at Tennessee, and we both know you can't play at Tennessee, then something's wrong with you. No doubt, Coach. Not like, you know, because my yo, I'm a son of a coach too. So I feel your pain because my dad's 84 years old. He talks about it all the time. I said, son, I don't know. After your generation, so what's some of change? Y'all ain't cut the same way. <laughs> <'Cause> I... <laughs> and I think that's generations after generations. You know, I think Coach Cole is, 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 is having a, you know, a transitional issue sometimes with the kids nowadays because it was when you when he coached you, he could say it and y'all did it. But now when yeah. he coaches these kids, they want to know why. Why I got to do it this way? Or they question, you know, how can you question a guy that's a legend? In my eyes, I mean, in, in black college football, regardless of what people say about the Cole brothers, all I knew was the Cole brothers were good. Yes. And that's all that matters. They, 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 they were good football coaches. They were good men. They did everything they can to help their kids matriculate in life. And I thought they did a really good job. How many people can say they went into the OVC and won it twice, not once, but twice? And I don't think it's happened again as an HBCU co I mean, a, a, a program that has won it Maybe not even once. Maybe they don't. I haven't done the homework on that, so I don't want to speak, you know, out of turn. But maybe you know. But I think that they're the only coaching staff from a HBCU to win the OVC twice. That's correct. Oh, see that? See, I I knew. But see, you you talking about that's legendary stuff. And then you know what they did at Alabama State, even though it went another way. You can't help but to pay homage to people like that that does what they do and bring what they bring to the table. L.C. Cole has been a great addition to my staff as to, in terms of, you know, even though I've coached 24 years, he's probably forgot more football than I've learned. So I'm always leaning on him to always learn something new or look at things a different way. You know, I got four head coaches on this staff that was previously head coaches. And, and, and that tells you that I'm invested in winning, not invested in my ego. No doubt, man, because I remember as a kid being that football camp, how detailed it was and as a kid at football camp for the Cole. So I've always been a fan of Coach Johnny Cole, L.C. Cole. They, they was good to me as a child, like, because I was going up there from Atlanta camp just to get, get, get away. You know, right. I, was, I, was, I grew up in the hood of Atlanta, Coach. You know how it is to be. I know. You just, just, just want to get away, right? So 
they took it again a kid from Atlanta, not from Nashville, for some two weeks of football camp, treating me treating me like royalty. And I never forgot that. That's why I've always been in that corner because I know how kind of people they are. And because going there at football camp is why ultimately I went to Tennessee State anyway, because I was exposed to. Well, that's right. I have you probably played with my good friend James Johnson. They call him uh, Bud. We call him Bud. But James is my good friend. He coached with me at Stillman. And, and I really, Coach Johnson's a really good, really, really super good guy. Um, Baby Haitian is down at Ever Waters. I'm sure that, that was one of your teammates, too. Yes. I think Baby Haitian's a really, really good guy, stand up guy. And you can see that cold in y'all bloodline. You expect to win. You're coming in the door. You're going to be ready to go. And y'all had a confidence that, you know, it's a stain that people can't wipe off. And that's why you see the turn of the tables at Edward Waters because that's all Baby Haitian there. Baby Haitian got that attitude that I'm going to win and I'm going to figure it out along the way. No doubt, man. You know, like you said, we took it. We in Black Hawks football, you know, as coach, we make stuff the way we don't have. We make it work. You know what I'm saying? Like, at some State, I, like, it, it bugs my soul that, we still dress in our basketball arena, but right. it made us stronger. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, the things that happen in the HBCU world, but it sucks, but we love it, though. That's what we're about. And I feel like, you know, what you're doing at Allen, I, I know Jasher pretty well from his time covering the swag meak and the, you know, and doing the, the submersion bowl. So I think you have, a, you have a good guy around him, my man, Sean Walker, is there. So it's a lot of good people at Allen, mm -hmm. and, I, and I really appreciate you all, what y'all are doing, because I feel like I got to quote you all because so many good people that I know are there. Let me tell you something. Let me speak on my AD. My AD is a really, really stand-up guy. He'll go to battle for you, stand on the table. I always tell my coaches, you got to be careful of the person that's at the table speaking for you and who representing you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like at no point in time that my AD does not represent me. I can talk about my president. I'm excited about what Dr. McErnest McNeely invests in what we're doing. He is, you know, you can work for presidents that may have an interest in sports or athletics in the whole, but when somebody invests into it, it shows you that they really mean what they say and they want to do everything they're trying to get accomplished. And I love that. Those two guys, man, I couldn't have been around a more supportive group of people in my lifetime. And I tell people all the time, you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plan and, and, and see what happens. I've had a couple opportunities to walk away from Allen, but I don't know why the energy keeps pulling me back. Like, oh, we ain't finished it yet. We ain't finished it yet. I was looking for coaches. LC just came on board. Another guy came on board. EJ Jr. came on board. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. People see my vision and they want to work with you. Think of LC Cole, if he didn't think that I could get this job done, would set up and say, I'm in the back end of my career. Why would I go over there knowing that they ain't got the things that they need to have to do what they need to do and have the kids that we need to have with the energy? Man, that that just it, it I I I am um, when you want to say somebody is ready for a season to start that we feel the best we've ever felt coming into a season, like we're confident about what we're going to put on the field, the amount of kids that return, their ability to retain information that helps us coach and that we're not preparing. You know, once they've been here a couple of years now, now it's just about the mental aspect of what they're mm -hmm. going to do. No doubt, Coach. And, man, I feel there too, man, because just seeing the work from, from afar, what you all do, and I'm seeing it, man. I, I, I'm loving it because I say I can say it, man, you know, I don't care if it's, D2, NIA, or, or, or FCS, I want to promote you all because as a Tennessee State grad, HBCU grad, it's my job with a platform to promote you. Like, Coach, I'll tell you the same thing. I've been doing this 15 years for radio, right? And I've had offers to leave. But if I leave, I have to give up part of me. And if I leave, I'll have to ask somebody. I talked to, to Teddy Keaton today. Now what I got to do is ask myself. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it, let me tell you something. The SIAC Media Day this year, probably hands down, no, no knock to anybody who ran it for years before. I think Commissioner Moore did the best he could. But this year, it was something special about it. I mean, it was well organized. It was so great to see the Hall of Fame come back. You know, so people who needed to be paid homage to. Um, and, I, and I always say I was so happy that my president made it in because we wait so much to wait till people die or they mm -hmm. gone. They can't enjoy their flowers. The contribution that some of these people have made to HBCU sports, even the guy that used to work, work for Honor Dam was there. He still writes from time to time, but he's an older guy. I believe he deserves an opportunity to go somewhere. And I say it every time I get a chance because 
he was the only guy at one time that you could get any type of uh, a report on HBCU football. You had to go to onadan.com and look at whatever he put out that week and to see all the media we had spread it across there that came to be a part and the, the, the interest in HBCU football has grown. Imagine what it was like when you played, when you barely could get on TV. We all on ESPN now. We all radio. So come on now. You got to give it a hand for where we started at to where yes. we Today and I and I'm very appreciative just to be a little bit part of that. I remember we had one reporter coach from the, from the Tennessee. And <laughs> that's all we had, and it was usually some some negative if you if you could find it. It like it was like when they wrote a, when they wrote about you, you they was wrong. They had your name spelled wrong. They didn't know, but if you did anything wrong out here, in them they was ready. They was ready for you. They knew everything about you, where you came from, but we never could get a positive report. But I'm so thankful. Even the local TV stations were there to cover Division II football and the fact that we're probably one of the only conferences that have an ESPN deal. I don't care if it's on ESPN 3 or 2. Just the fact that my mama in Bruton, Alabama can get on her computer, log mm -hmm. in, and click, and be able to see her baby coach, and I ain't right down the street that she got to get in the car. And the other thing I love about it, that we still ain't lacking in attendance because just because we on TV, that don't that they, ain't nothing can change the game day environment of an HBCU football game. Nothing. No doubt. No doubt. The only time I was on TV was like a classic, Memphis and Circle City. Or if we played or, or we played our, our obligatory uh FBS game to get money. That's right. So and four games I, a year on TV. Here I am, a fifth year program, and I'm gonna be on TV six times. My A D even hooked up with a guy in Alabama called Jock Sports, and we have our game streamed out of, you know at your home stadium. There was times that we couldn't get this type of reporting. And, and I'm, I'm, I appreciate the platform. I appreciate the opportunity to be a part. Just as much as it meant to me for you to get to talk to me, hell, I'd be happy to talk to y'all because y'all give me a perspective or a point of view that you may see. And sometimes we don't get enough pats on the back for the work that we have to do in the environment that we do it in and the strenuous you know, um, things that we're placed against. And everybody thinks we just show up out there and we don't have this. But we've been robbed of everything that was good, so we have to do more with less. And I probably always prided myself for this coach. I've probably done more with less than any football coach that you see, and I was able to maintain a winning record with less. No doubt. And coach, you know, for me, being an HBCU grad, I feel like it's my duty to support give you a platform because if I don't do it, who else will? You know, I built the thing from the ground up, coach. Nobody helped me build this. I'm a sole proprietor. I've ran this show. I have interns, but barely is just me. I'm the booker, researcher, uh, advertiser. I'm everything here on this show, man. And I love it because I live and die by what I do. Nobody right. else can turn my fate with me. And then I, I like to have my own fate in my own hands. But guess what? Everything that's going to happen to you, you control it. And that's what I tell people. You know, if I, if I ever became a pastor, if I ever got that calling, and I don't think I have that calling, I would preach on living your life in the fear of failure. And I think that people live their life. Like this challenge here, my, after I left Stillman, I was ahead of the game in, in, in the college level. I was already ahead of the game in the arena leagues. I was like 50, I was like 25 and 5 when I got out of the arena league, probably a little bit more than that. I think it was like 47 and something. I don't remember what it was, but I hadn't lost no more than five games since I had been coaching. But I tell people all the time, I'm not afraid to step out there. I'm not afraid. I say everybody that I've read, any book that you've read, anything you've been a part of, the people that's been great, they fail more than they succeeded. But that one time that you do and the gratitude you get, the work ethic you put into it because you're trying not to fail. You don't have nothing to fall back on. I ain't got it. I can't call nobody else. This is what I'm going to do. And then people, you know you're doing something good. And I'm going to hit you with this one here. You know you're doing something good when other people want you, even in your losing seasons. Yes. You got that right, Coach. And I thought this, man, over the years, Coach, it's been some hard days and hard days, but it feels good, though, because I know I'm doing it for the right purpose. That's right. I'm not doing it for anything but to help others because I'm a servant leader, Coach. I also work in the NBA, too. You see, I got the Atlanta Hawks on. So you know, I'm, Hawks, I'm in the NBA. So, like, I don't have, I don't have to do this. That's why I preach to you. You know, I, I said, I don't do nothing I do. I do it because I want to. That's I want right. to help and serve because I feel like being in my position, 
not being a person who feels like I'm better than anybody else. I can go give back to those who have given to me and pour it to my people and use it for good. I feel like sometimes a lot of people get a little status and they forget where it came from. I ain't never That's forget right. where it came from, Coach. That's right. That's why I promote I you all. That's why I, I, say what I, do. I, I love it. I represent it every time I get a chance. I tell my kids, but see, we have different values than most people got. And, and that's why we can connect like we're connecting right now on this show because we got different values. The work ethic that we're going to put into this, I can't fail. I refuse to lose it. On every door, it's an expected win. It say on the hallway, I didn't come here just to play. We came here to win. I said it when they built my turf. I said, nobody builds stuff for losers now. Ain't nobody okay. building you a stadium. Ain't nobody putting turf out on your practice field. Ain't nobody doing all this stuff for you to lose. They're doing it because they're investing in you because they want to see you be great. And I and I talk about the academic piece, man. The academic piece is a big part of what it do. I tell because everybody not going to the NFL. Everybody not going with it. Find something that you can wrap your lane in and get in your lane and do what you do with it. Everybody want to be an entrepreneur. Okay, that's fine. Find a problem that needs to be solved. And if you can make life easier for somebody, you can get rich real quick. But if you can't find something that needs to be solved, then you can't become rich real quick. Simple. That's what I'll tell you, Coach. So we yesterday. Yesterday, I was at Clayton State University speaking for their basketball team. I told them about what I do. I said, yes, I have an NBA job, but I took that money to, to fund the boss man show, the media group. I have a lawn care service. I invest into a barbershop, and I'm a notary. So I'm in four different lanes inside of my real job that – there's a need for it. There's a need for radio putting and putting content out there. The need for grass cutting. A need for a barbershop and notaries. That you got to do mortgages, you know, wheels and trust. So I'm in four lanes where there's a need that's pandemic proof. That's, that's the word I use. Pandemic proof. So I told them, young men, use your degree. My degree is in business coach. My minor is in entrepreneurship. My minor is in psychology. So. If I want to become a counselor, I took a test, I could too do that as well. So I told those young men yesterday, in your studies, in your majors, find things to where you can have a path once basketball ends for them and well, football or whatever, because I had to take that. I, the NFL wasn't in my future, Coach. It just wasn't. But I had a mind and, and a mindset to do something. And look where I am today. I've been 15, 15, 15 years, and I'm successful. <laughs> But think about it like this. It might have not have been in your future. You understood that. And you still had fun playing at Tennessee State for four years. And when y'all all get together, you have a blast talking about the time that you shared at Tennessee State. And I tell people, those are the moments that you can't get back. Jumping around, going to school to school doesn't allow you to grow a connectivity with people. You don't become friends. Those four years you spent with a guy, that stuff matters. That roommate you had, that I still talk about. My my roommate has a, a podcast. It's called the Gridiron Podcast. And, and, and guess what I love? I love it because he's doing something that he loves to do. And anytime I can jump on his show, I'm always jumping on for him. I want to be an expert in certain areas. I don't get to watch as much college football, pro football, basketball, because I have my own stuff over here I have to deal with. I said, maybe when I get a little tired and I get home and I ain't got nothing else to do, I flip it on. I'm just interested in it. I'm obsessed with Allen University. I'm obsessed with the success that Allen University can have. I'm obsessed to being the guy that when my grandkids come back here and they say, who did this? Coach Keaton built this. Coach Keaton is built by Keaton. Your granddaddy did this. That's where my, my heart is at. And coach, I got a few more for you, man. And I also tell people, Allen is a private school. So at Tennessee State, even though not the, even though it wasn't the most, we had benefits of state money coming in. Right. And federal state. And I the way we wanted, but we had it. And Allen, it's not the same. It's That's private. Right. So the money as you get is a little different. So it's it's a different level when you're dealing with a private agency and a public one. Because the public one, you kind of have to, have to have to get some money out there. But you right. know what, you guys are a little different. I don't feel like saying that, hey, we're all, we're, we're in the same boat. We're not the same boat as far as public versus private. And what you got to do, man, is a little different. And what you all accomplish, man, with, with what you got to do as a private school, man, I applaud it because I know it's a little different, different, different difficult. And when you are already a state school, when you get kind of a little bit of a boost already. Let me tell you something. The good thing about Allen University is the support from the alumni. They, they may be a, almost, you know, one foot in the grave. But those guys, those older men that come in here, they step up. They, if you ask them, you want some. And, and my and my president, he, he's a beast. 
I mean, when he died, they're going to study his bones on how to resurrect an HBCU. Because he, he not only did this here, he done it at Stillman as well, the college that I graduated from. A guy that knows how to find things and make things work. Uh, a guy that doesn't say he just gives up on things. Man, I think the money that we get in from the church, the AME church, they, they support us. They believe in what we're doing. They believe in, I say the AME church was the original Black Lives Matter. They really care about them kids getting what they need to get. And they're not going to let you treat them kids any kind of way either. And if they need, they feel like there's something that they need to pour money into it, by God, they do what they need to do to make it. I, I appreciate the ministers, the the, 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 uh, the bishops, all those. And we got a, a, a bishop that's here, that's in South Carolina in the 7th District, Samuel L. Green. He has a vision. He's a businessman. He's not just a pastor. He's a businessman. And everything that he's done with the team and the leadership of Jasha Cox, um, Dr. Uh, Ernest McNeely, Dr. Doug Taylor, and these guys have come together as one, and they figured out ways to make things happen at Allen that even in five years, I'd be like, man, how did they pull this off? Just like we're about to get a stadium right now. And, you know, some people talk about it. But we got the blueprints, the land, and everything is in our hand. And, and when they told me they was going to build me a turf practice field, I was like, no, man, y'all ain't, y'all not going to. I come out there in six months, I had me a turf practice field. It ain't 100 yards, it's about 70 yards, but that's about all you use anyway. I'm excited about the vision of the people that's there because I can't say I did it all by myself. I will be lying. I got a great support group. I got a great administration. I got great alumni that support what we're doing. And, and I ask them all the time. I said, I know y'all going to run me away. You know, if I can't hurry up and win, they'd be like, why would we? Look what you've done for Allen. Look what you've done. And Allen had about 200 students when we walk, walked into this door. They're, wow. running, they're tweeting around 700 now. And we're going to get to 1,000 because we believe in what we're selling. Can you imagine going to Allen? You get a free MacBook. Imagine when you went to Tennessee State, they gave you a free man book. I would have loved it. They don't have to pay for no books. All their books are free. They have the online books. So they, everything they do, they get, they, they, it's it's just free health care. They got health care where they can go telemedicine, go down there and get medications, whatever, the prescriptions, they can get it for free. We have health on, the, on, on this campus. That's how much Allen gives. And, and it's only $23,000 to go to school here. The wow. books Free books alone. Free books alone. And you and I both know what free books mean. Because you go to that bookstore at Tennessee State and pay $1,000 for that biology book. And then at the end of the semester, you'll be like, oh, I'm about to come up. I'm about to sell this book. And they tell you they're going to give you $25 for it. Now, you know how that feels. So these kids don't know what that feels like. That's the thing that we've been able to do to attract young men to come to school here and then to have L.C. Cole. E.J. Jr., I don't know if you know E.J. Jr., E.J. Jr. just got inducted into the College Hall of Fame for football. He played Alabama. He played at Alabama back in the 60s for Bear Bryant, played in the NFL for 13 years. I mean, that's a guy who wouldn't want to touch that. My offensive coordinator, Jackie Robinson from Clemson University, legendary around here. So you're talking about Woody, Woody um, Woodrow um. What's Woodrow's last name? Woody. Woody McC uh, uh, Woody Danzler. Woody Danzler. Woody Woodrow Danzler. Danzler. Yeah, I remember him. Woody Danzler. Woody Danzler. He comes in and spends some time with my quarterbacks. Just sit down with him. He was the first Michael Vick. I tell people that all the time. They don't believe it. I said he was Randall Cunningham. And, and, and those guys were our guys that we looked up to when I used to yeah, watch. Yeah, the Cowboys just said they just got to use him the right way. That's right. There you go. So I'm just saying, we know what we're looking at. Those guys coming and being a part of this program has a lot of uh, perks to it. Now, I know most people don't know this, but Allen ran the SIEC for a long time in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. I didn't know the tradition was that hit that rich until I started doing homework. So my goal right now is to bridge that old with the new, and hopefully we can turn Allen into that powerhouse that it used to be. Well, Coach, I'm going to help you because I'm AME myself, so I know what it is. <laughs> I, I'm going to beat Bethlehem in Atlanta. 
Oh, that's what's up then. Pass us John Foster. <laughs> that's what's up then. I appreciate all their support. I appreciate their help. I appreciate those people, man. I, they don't. I don't get to talk to them and touch them and and be around them. But if they hear your podcast and hear what you say, if you get a, a word, let them know. My but time pastor, has- listen to my show, though. Listen to yeah. him. The pastor go see this. He he think I do. He gets on me with some time I use some bad language. To say hey, I get past it, pastor. I get past it. <laughs> I use some bad language sometimes. Man, I appreciate them. Like you said, this, in this new day and age, people get a little worried that we're investing this kind of money and we're not getting a return on our investment. Baby, you get more than your return on your investment. I promise you this thing here is as close to being good as good can be. If you really paid attention, last year we lost five games by a combined of eight points. Eight mm-hmm. points. I'm talking about we stood toe-to-toe with Tuskegee. We stood toe-to-toe with Fort Valley. These are the a pinnacle schools in our conference that we know historically they're always going to be good. That's what we're building up for. We want to be able to play with those guys. We don't want to just play at the bottom half. And, you know, we all know how the SIAC work. You got them three schools at the top of the food chain and the rest of us, you can put in a bag and shake up about where they might finish. I always want to be at the top of the food chain. And you know, LC Cole, he was your coach. You know, he's thinking about it all the time. I want to be the best. And that's what we're trying to do. And I think our kids are buying into that. Yeah, I know Coach Cole's so always gonna scheme up something to, to beat to get that quarterback, get make a better mistake, man. Coach Cole's a schemer, man, but I love it. It's it's Look so it. detailed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn my camera a certain way. Look at it right there. That's Coach Cole on the board coming yes, up with the I, <laughs> I remember those. I remember that. <laughs> He come in here, he'll be we didn't went out all through the game plan, and then he'll come in here and say, Coach, I was sleeping last night as I was watching the film. It kind of resonated in my mind. We need to do this. That way we can keep the same look that we was giving them here, and they just won't know what's coming at. That is Coach Cole's to, to the T. I remember that greatly, Coach Keaton. But Coach Keaton, well, I'm gonna tell you, man, this has been a, a joy to you this morning. I am so privileged to talk this morning because I, I really want you to know I want to afford your program and help you in any way I can. And I'm here for you guys. I'll get your number offline here so you can say contact if you need me. I'll come over to Columbia. They're far from Atlanta. I'll make the job over there, man. And I'm, I'm here for you, brother. We're going to make you proud this year. You just wait. I'm excited. I'm, I'm talking about I'm really excited about what we're going to do. We're going to put on the full armor of God and we're going out here and we're going to get it. Yes, sir. Coach, appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. You have a great day. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.